Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church on this Friday, July 24th, the day the church remembers Thomas Akempis. So glad you could join me for morning prayer this morning. I invite you to follow along in a book of common prayer. Our service begins on page 78. If you don't have a book of common prayer, please visit the link in the description, bcponline.org. Or you can simply sit back and allow the prayers to speak to you wherever you may be this morning. And now, as we begin our time in worship, let us pause, take a few deep breaths, and recall the presence of Christ in our midst. Thus says the High and Lofty One, who inhabits eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with the one who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it, Come, let us adore him. The Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. There are two psalms appointed for this morning. Psalm 40, which is found on page 640, and Psalm 54, which is found on page 659. Psalm 40 and Psalm 54. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe, and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be, who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book it is written concerning me, I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaimed righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness I have not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. You do not withhold your compassion from me. You let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For innumerable troubles have crowded upon me. My sins have overtaken me, and I cannot see. They are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed, who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them draw back and be disgraced, who take pleasure in my misfortune. Let those who say, Aha, and gloat over me be confounded, 
because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation continually say, Great is the Lord. Though I am poor and afflicted, the Lord will have regard for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. Do not tarry, O my God. Save me, O Lord, by your name. In your might defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me, and your faithfulness destroy them. I will offer you a freewill sacrifice, and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye has seen the ruin of my foes. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua summoned the Gibeonites, and he said to them, Why did you deceive us, saying, We are very far from you, when you dwell among us? Now, therefore, you are cursed, and some of you shall always be slaves, hewer of wood and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua, Because it was told to your servants for certainty that the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land before you. So we greatly feared for our lives because of you and did this thing. And now, behold, we are in your hand. Do as it seems good and right in your sight to do to us. So he did to them and delivered them out of the hand of the people of Israel, and they did not kill them. But Joshua made them that day hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord, to continue to this day in the place which he should choose. When Adaziadek, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had taken Ai and had utterly destroyed it, doing to Ai and its king as he had done to Jericho and its king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon made peace with Israel and were among them, he feared greatly, because Gibeon was a great city, like one of the royal cities, because it was greater than Ai. And all its men were mighty. So Adaziadek, king of Jerusalem, sent Hoyam, king of Hebron, to Piram, king of Jarmuth, and to Japhia, king of Lysheesh, to Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come to me and help me. Let us smite Gibeon. He has made peace with Joshua and the people of Israel. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, and the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon, gathered their forces and went up with their army and encamped against Gibeon and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent to Joshua at the camp at Gilgal, saying, Do not relax your hand from your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the hill country are gathered against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hands. There shall not a man of them stand before you. So Joshua came upon them suddenly having marched up all night from Gilgal. And the Lord threw them into a panic before Israel, who slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, and chased them by the way of the ascent of Beth, Beth Horon, and smote them as far as Achaia and Mekida. And as they fled before Israel, while they were going down the ascent of Beth Horon, the Lord threw down great stones from heaven upon them as far as Azkaia, as and they died. There were more who died because of the hailstones and the men of Israel killed with their sword. They spoke, then spoke Joshua to the Lord in the day 
when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the men of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand now still at Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ajion. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stayed in the midst of heaven, and it did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. There has been no day like it before or since, when the Lord hearkened to the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Then Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, to encamp at Gilgal. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I myself am satisfied about you, my brethren, that you yourselves are full of goodness filled with all knowledge, and able to instruct one another. But on some points I have written to you very boldly by way of reminder, because of the grace given me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offerings of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God. For I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has wrought through me to win obedience from the Gentiles by word and deed, by the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and as far around as Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ, thus making it my ambition to preach the gospel, not where Christ has already been named, lest I build on another man's foundation, but as it is written, they shall see who have never been told of him, and they shall understand who have never heard of him. This is the reason why I have so often been hindered from coming to you. But now, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, and since I have longed for many years to come to you, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain, and to be sped by, on my journey there by you once I have enjoyed your company for a little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their be. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. 
When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that he was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Therefore that field has been called the field of blood to this day. They must fulfill what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord directed me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today is the day the church remembers Thomas a Kempis, and he is perhaps more widely known than that of any other medieval Christian writer. He wrote The Imitator of Christ, and it has been translated into more languages than any other book except the Holy Scriptures. Millions of Christians have found this manual a treasured and constant source of edification. His name was Thomas Hammerkin, and he was born at Kempen in the Dutch, Duchy of Cleves about 1380. He was educated at Deventer by Brethren of the Common Life and joined their order in 1399 at their house of Mount St. Agnes in Zwolle in the Low Countries. He took his vows there in 1407 and was ordained a priest in 1415 and was made a sub-prior in 1425. He died on July 25th, 1471. The Order of the Brethren of the Common Life was founded by Gerard Grote, and it included both clergy and lay members who cultivated a biblical piety of a practical rather than speculative nature, with stress upon the inner life and the practice of virtues. They supported themselves by copying manuscripts and teaching. One of the most famous pupils was the humanist Erasmus. Many have seen them in Harbingers of the Reformation, but the brethren had little interest in the problems of the institutional church. Their spirituality, known as the New Devotion, has influenced both Catholic and Protestant traditions of prayer and meditation. And so this day we remember Thomas Akempis. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. 
Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Collect for the Feast of Thomas Akempis. Holy Father, you have nourished and strengthened your church by the inspired writings of your servant, Thomas Akempis. Grant that we may learn from him to know what is necessary to be known, to love what is to be loved, to praise what highly pleases you, and always to seek to know and follow your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite your own prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, and please feel free to leave those prayer requests in the comment section below. For our parish members and friends who are ill, infirm, or in need, including Tony, Leo, Rob, Ben, Eleanor, Samuel, Matthew, Phil, Joan, Eloise, Pete, Mary and Scott, Kate, Loretta, Leonard, May, Bridget, Katie and Doug and their children, Bryce, Meredith and her family, Bill, Brooke, George, Nicholas, Jordan, Gladys, Nancy, and Jean. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> for those we name with our lips or in our hearts, for those we may name later in the comment section, for Marcia, for Joan, and for Arlene, And for those whom have asked our prayers, but we cannot recall at this time. O God of compassion, giver of life and health, we pray your healing mercies upon all who are in any way affected by the outbreak of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Comfort and sustain those who have been stricken. Relieve their pain and restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength. Grant you all in authority the courage to make wise decisions that are essential for the common good, and strengthen them to lead institutions that care for those whom they serve. Protect those who are compelled to work farms and fields, city streets and factories that put them in danger with little pay. Watch over all first responders and those in the medical professions whose duty it is to care for the sick. Guard them all, Lord Christ, from all danger and keep them safe in the knowledge that it is through their sacrifice and service that the health of the whole community is promoted. Mercifully accept these our prayers, O God of all comfort, and our only help in time of need. Amen. Our worship concludes this morning with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to 
us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for the immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I invite you to join me this evening at 7 p.m. for evening prayer right here from St. Stephen's. Uh, I also would like you to add in your prayers um, Bob and Lauren, who are getting married tomorrow afternoon right here at St. Stephen's. Please keep them in your prayers today. Um, on Sunday morning, we will once again live stream our worship. There still is space if you'd like to join us in attendance. Uh, we will be sending out the link to the Sign Up Genius today, and we will also put it on our Facebook page just in case you've lost it. We'd love to see you. God's peace be with you this day. Stay safe and stay healthy. Amen. Oh,